Hello friends. Welcome back to S3 Cloud Hub channel. In this session, we will talk about the storage gateway. So without any further ado, let's get start the session. First, let's talk about hybrid cloud. So AWS is starting to push for hybrid cloud. What is hybrid cloud? That means that part of your infrastructure is going to be on the cloud of AWS and part of your infrastructure is going to stay on premises. And this can be due to multiple reasons. Maybe you have a longer cloud migration, maybe of security requirements or compliance requirements. Maybe it's part of your strategy to only leverage a cloud for elastic workloads, but you keep a lot of stuff on premises. So we have some services that we really like in AWS, such as Amazon S3, which is a proprietary storage technology, which is unlike EFS, which is an NFS compliance file system. So how would you expose, for example, the S3 data on premises? And the bridge between this S3 and your on-premises infrastructure is going to be a WS storage gateway. So if we look at the storage cloud native options on AWS, we have block storage, which is Amazon EBS or the EC2 instant store. We have file systems, such as Amazon EFS or Amazon FSX. And we have object level storage, such as Amazon S3 or Amazon Glacier. So storage gateway is going to bridge your on-premise data and the cloud in S3. The use cases of storage gateway can be multiple. For example, disaster recovery, backup and restore doing tiered storage. And there are three kinds of storage gateway we need to know about going into the exam. So there's the file storage gateway, the volume storage gateway, and the tape gateway. And the storage gateway will then, and we'll see those in details in a second, import this data into either Amazon EBS, Amazon S3, or Glacier. File gateway. So the file gateway is for you to have configured S3 buckets being accessible using the NFS and SMB protocol. And this supports the kind of storage classes, such as S3 standard, S3 IA and S3 one zone IA and then the bucket access using IAM roles for each file gateway will be secured this way. And the most recently used data will be cached in the file gateway. So the file gateway can be mounted on many servers on premises. And finally something to know for the exam. If you need user authentication you can have integration with Active Directory on premises to perform that user authentication. The second kind of gateway is the volume gateway. And this is block storage using the ISCSI protocol, backed by Amazon S3. And the idea is that you will have your volumes being backed up by EBS snapshots, which can in turn help you restore on-premise volumes in case you need to. So you have two types of volume gateway. You have the cached volumes to get low latency access to the most recent data. Or stored volume, where the entire dataset is on-premises and there is a scheduled backup to Amazon S3. Tape Gateway. Tape Gateway is that if you have some companies that have like, for example a tape backup system using physical tapes. Then with the Tape Gateway, uses the same process but the tapes are going to be backed up in the cloud. And so this virtual tape library or VTL, is going to be backed by Amazon S3 and Glacier. You're going to back up existing data using tape-based process and using the ISCSI interface. And then this is going to work with leading backup software vendors. Finally, storage gateway hardware appliance. So if you don't have virtualization on premises, you can use a storage gateway hardware appliance and you can order it literally on Amazon.com. And then once you install this hardware appliance, so this mini server into your infrastructure, then you can set it up as a file gateway, or volume gateway, or a tape gateway. And this is really something physical you have to install, and it will have the enough CPU, memory, network and SSD cache resources to function correctly. So this is very helpful. For example for daily NFS backups in small data centers where you don't have the virtualization available. So that's it for the theory part, now let's see the hands-on. So as you can see, here is my AWS management console. Here let's search for storage gateway. Click on it. So let's create a gateway. Here, as you can see, we have four kinds of gateway. 
we can have Amazon S3 file gateway, FSX file gateway, volume gateway, and tape gateway. So Amazon S3 file gateway is to have a local cache for Amazon S3 on-premises with your most recently used data. So this is the whole purpose of file gateway. And here you can look at the platform options. So you can either host this on some on-premises virtualization platform, such as VMware, or Hyper-V, or KVM, or we can host it directly on Amazon EC2. But it's going to remove some benefits for caching, or you can have your own hardware appliance that you can order directly from here. And once you hook that hardware appliance into your data center, you will be running file gateway for you. And then we can click on next, and we can configure the gateway, which is out of scope, I just want to show you the main option. Now the Amazon FSX file gateway is the same as S3, but this time you want to cache the window file server directly on premises. And again here we have different platform options, and then we would configure the FSX file gateway properly. The volume gateway is very interesting, because we have two options, and that is what I want to show you. So we have the cached volume, which is going to give you low latency access to your most recently used data for your volumes, or storage volume, which is on-premise data with schedule upside backup. So the volume gateway is going to use you block storage in Amazon S3, and point-in-time backups as EBS snapshots so they are actually volumes. And then finally, the tap gateway. Tap gateway allowing you to backup your data into Amazon S3. Archive it into Glacier, using your existing tape-based processes, because it uses the same protocol that you are used to with UVTL. So that's it for the different storage gateways, I hope you like it. So guys, that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below, I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.